A friend of mine said to me once, Hannah, why is it that every picture I take seems to be out of focus? She's like, I just can't seem to get it sharp and in focus. But I said to her, it might not actually be the focus. What it was is the picture she was taking, the shutter was open for too long that it created some blur while she was hand holding the camera. So it was actually nothing to do with focus at all. So sometimes when you think your pictures are blurry, it's not always your focus, it's more than likely your shutter. The shutter is the part of the camera which opens and closes to let light onto the back of the sensor. It used to be that it would let light onto your film, but more or less these days it's now been replaced with a digital sensor. Within your camera there is a shutter, made from two sections, which sits in front of the sensor or film if you aren't shooting digitally. When you press the button to take a photo, the shutter opens, light comes in, it hits your sensor or film, then the shutter closes again, and that is how your image is captured. So why does the shutter speed change in the first place? Why doesn't it just remain the same? Well, it's all to do with how much light your camera needs to let in to create a good exposure and record your photo. If you don't have much light available to you, your shutter needs to be open for longer to let light in. If there's lots of light, and everything's kind of bright, it's only going to need to open very quickly, so very short and sharp. The main purpose of the shutter to open and close is to let light in, but two things happen. Not only is it letting light in, it's capturing the speed of the movement within your frame at that point in time. So if your shutter is taking a long time to open and close, then anything that moves within the frame during that time period is going to be a little blurry. If it's something that only happens very quickly, it can freeze movement and capture the action much faster than we can ever really see it too. The speed of the shutter opening and closing dictates how much movement is captured within your photo. We can adjust the length of time the shutter is open for and that is why we call it shutter speed. One thing that helped me to remember what to do when I first started out was to think the higher the number, the faster the shutter speed, and the lower the number, the slower the shutter speed. There's no set formula and I couldn't tell you an exact shutter speed to use for each subject it all comes down to how fast your subject is moving and the light available to you at that point in time. To give you a rough guide when you're hand holding your camera and photographing people who are stood still, it's worth trying to stay above 1 60th of a second to prevent motion blur either from yourself or from your subject. A good tip to prevent camera shake when hand holding your camera is to use a shutter speed equal or above your focal length. For example, if you're using a 50mm lens, then you should avoid a shutter speed slower than 1 50th of a second. If you're using a 200mm lens, then you should avoid a shutter speed slower than 1 200th of a second, and so on. Of course, we all have different abilities when it comes to hand holding the camera steady, but this is a good place to start to avoid disappointment of blurry photos. Typically now, modern day cameras have anything from shutter speed from infinity all the way down to 8,000th of a second. So there really is a huge spectrum. You've got to find the bit that's in between. You can get creative with it with slower shutter speeds, but generally speaking, if you're going to handhold, I would say a 60th upwards is going to be good for you. When it comes to photographing sports or wildlife or anything that's quite fast moving, the high hundreds will usually freeze the action. 
One of my favourite things to do is to photograph Jamie. He presents a bit of a challenge to me because he's a surfer. I'm Jamie Ward. I've been surfing since I was seven years old and uh, grown up with a family of surfers. And when he goes out in the water, there is so much going on. Firstly, I've got to find him in the sea out there amongst all those waves that are crashing. I think like the best things you ever do in surfing is when no one's around and no one's watching. <laughs> when he catches a wave, it's hard for me to keep up. The movement of the water, he darts in and out, and to capture that is somewhat of a challenge. I think you always want to get better than the last wave you had. To get a perfect barrel is the wisdom. Always the aim. To freeze that movement of the water, of him when he's turning and going back and forth, it's really satisfying when you get a real sharp, crisp image where I can see his hair flying, the water everywhere, and that really works for me. And it's good fun. I think with surfing, it's a kind of like release from normal day life. It doesn't matter what money problems or what problems you have on the beach, as soon as you go in the sea, they kind of just wash away. Cornwall's like a bit of a hidden gem in England. There is places you can go and hide away from the crowds. Compared to the rest of the world, it's, I don't know, it can be as good as anywhere. But um, it's just a nice place. <laughs>Water is a great example if you are using shutter speed because sometimes you want to really capture that motion and freeze every little droplet that you can see and at other times it, you want to make it look really smooth and capture that movement within a frame. I like to come down to the beach early evening, especially when the tide's coming in and the rocks are exposed still but the water is just starting to creep in as the tide comes in. You don't realise that just the rate that, that water comes in. So what you can do is create some really nice movement within your frame whilst you're taking a beautiful still landscape. So how do you do that? As long as your tripod is nice and secure on the floor, mount your camera to your tripod. You can take your shutter speed lower and lower and lower as the light is fading. And what happens is whilst that shutter is open, all that movement is captured in and around your scene. And there you have it, you've got a beautiful image that's got all this motion all captured within one still frame at the same time. And the effect's really quite good. When I'm doing the longer exposures, anything under a 60th, I'm on a tripod or a wall or anything that isn't gonna move. And generally from there, the camera takes care of the rest, as long as I know not to touch it. Most SLR cameras have a semi-automatic setting, which is perfect while you learn to master shutter speed. It makes the shutter speed the priority, so you can tell the camera what shutter speed you would like to use, fast or slow, and it will work the rest of the exposure out for you. Just look up in your manual where to find this setting on your particular camera. In time, you will get used to how fast or how slow to set your shutter for different subjects. But for now, just experiment and practice as much as you can. Hopefully now you know how to avoid that dreaded motion blur caused by a slow shutter. You can take control and get some fantastic action shots.